Slimer is the first ghost I think of when I hear the name Ghostbusters, then the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man would be the second. It's not hard to see why he's so memorable. The Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is a giant monster attacking the city like King Kong and Godzilla. Only difference is that the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is meant to be silly. In the first movie, Stay Puft is a mascot for a fictional brand of marshmallows. Gozer tells the Ghostbusters to choose their destructor by whatever it is they're thinking. Ray thinks back to when he roasts Stay Puft Marshmallows at Camp Wakanda when he was a kid. So that's why the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man came to life and attacked the city. Unlike Slimer, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man was destroyed by the Ghostbusters in the end, leaving behind a huge marshmallow mass. Going by this scene alone, there should be no way he could be part of the real Ghostbusters. Yet the show found a way. During the first season intro, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man appear among the other ghosts who got busted and trapped by the Ghostbusters. He also appeared in Mr. Sandman Dreamy a Dream as part of a boy's dream. A TV commercial in Apocalypse, What Now? And as a doll that Ray and Slimer owned in several episodes. All these were clever ways to incorporate Stay Puft without contradicting the movie. If the show had continued doing this, there never would have been any problem. Then came the episode Cry Uncle. Cyrus Spangler, Egon's uncle, doesn't believe in the supernatural. That is until he accidentally released Stay Puft from the containment unit. The Ghostbusters got him back by trapping him in four or five traps. I guess leaving another huge marshmallow mess wasn't an option. This leads me to address the elephant in the room. How could Stay Puff be in the containment unit? As I've mentioned before, the Ghostbusters destroyed them in the movie. One explanation is that the Ghostbusters took all the marshmallow goo and placed it in the containment unit. Over time, the goo reformed into Stay Puff, who is now free from Goza's influence. Okay, I'll buy that. Like Slimer, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man would become a friend to the Ghostbusters. The episode The Revenge of Murray the Mantis had the Ghostbusters release Stay Puft to take on Murray the Mantis in a battle similar to Godzilla and whatever monster he's facing. He'd later reappear in the episode Sticky Business. The reason why the Ghostbusters released him this time was that they were offered $50,000 to donate to a children's hospital if they featured him in a commercial for the Stay Puft Marshmallow Company. This Stay Puft is able to talk and seem to be on good terms with Slimer. Guess they hang out together. Stay Puft also appears to be a lovable teddy bear to the kids. A far cry from the Destructor in the first movie. I wish the real Ghostbusters had a Citizen Ghost type episode for Stay Puft. It would have helped explain why he's a good guy. Instead, we're left with more questions than answers. Yeah.